Hi everyone, Andy here at MVP Java. So today we're taking a look at Java Optional and we're gonna see if it really is a null pointer exception killer. Let's take a look at the outline before we get on with some coding examples. What problem are we trying to solve? We're trying to solve the problem of null. Obviously null causes null pointer exceptions, which is a bad thing. So how are we gonna solve that? Well, that's where Java Optional comes in. So what is an optional? An optional is nothing more than an immutable wrapper class. It'll wrap around whatever type you want, okay? And then you are going to be obliged, forced through a mechanism just like checked exceptions to check if that value that you wrapped is there or not there. There are two states in optional. You're present or you're empty, right? So think of not equal to null and equal to null, right? So if you're empty, you're like equal to null. If you're not empty, you have a value in there. So we don't say the word null anymore in optional because we're wrapping a value and we allow the client then to interrogate the optional to see if the value is there or not. So we're gonna take a look at that in practice. So once we get there, we'll take a look at how to create and retrieve values from an optional class. We'll take a look at recommendations. So where is the best place to use optional? You don't want to use it everywhere, okay? And if you want to know where not to use it, in order to keep this tutorial a little bit short, you can go take a look at my blog post at mvpjava.com and I actually list out where not to use optional with some examples. Now, I don't want this tutorial to be too long, so I divided it into two parts. Part one obviously is gonna cover everything I just talked about in the outline, but is also gonna take a look at some of these methods off of the optional. And then the second part is really gonna go more into the functional style of using an optional. However, we are gonna end this tutorial with a functional style example, okay? So let's take a look at our problem. What is the problem we're trying to solve? So I have some domain objects here. One of them is a flight object. So we're going to be pretending that we have a flight object and we want to probe the airspace against another flight or maybe a clearance that we're issuing. And if there's a problem, if there's a conflict, well, we're going to return that conflict object and that conflict is going to have like a conflict ID. Okay, so we're going to dumb down the domain objects quite a bit just to get the example rolling. All right, so let's take a look at what we're trying to solve here, what the problem is. Here we have a very ordinary looking method that probes for conflict, possibly returning null, right? So we probe the airspace and this method I have returning a random conflict. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's up to you to check and that's exactly what's going on here. If it's not equal to null, you return a conflict and if it is equal to null, you're returning a null. Now, this for a client can be pretty bad. So let's take a look at that problem. In the demo class here, I have a whole bunch of methods. We're gonna be covering these ones here in part one. So let's take a look at the problem first. So here I have a flight level that I'm actually at, 35,000 feet. I set that on the flight itself, and I want to request a increase in flight level of 1,000 feet, so 36,000 feet. I make sure they're not equal to each other, and then I probe for that method that I just showed you that can possibly return null. Here it is, I got my conflict back, but I do not check if it's equal to null or not. I just pass it on blindly to this method that distributes the conflict to a whole bunch of distributed applications, right? So a whole bunch of other executables now possibly get a null in there, and then you never know what's gonna happen. For example, if I run this right now, you can see that not a problem. There was no complaints. If I run it again, Oh, I get a null pointer exception because I returned a random conflict. So what happens is, is if this was a distributed application, let's say that geographically displayed the conflict or another um, application that displayed the conflict through some symbols on a flight strip or another application that did some mathematical processing, it would be very difficult for you to figure out where the source of the null came from. Okay, and so we want to stop the propagation of null into our client code base. That's really the problem we're trying to solve because we're not forced to check if the conflict is null or not. 
We might have all the best intentions, but that one might slip us, right? Slip by us, so to speak. And so what happens is we need a mechanism in place just like checked exceptions forces us to check, you know, uh, or catch through a try catch block the exception. We need the same mechanism in place, something that forces us to check. And that's where optional comes in. So let's comment out this uh, problem here and let's take a look at the solution in theory. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the flight object and I rewrote this exact example with using an optional. Now we haven't seen how to create an optional yet, but it doesn't matter. Just take a look at the return type. Now we're returning an optional of conflict. Okay, so what's going to happen now is when I call this method, right, the client calls this method with the same exact code as before, just with the method being different, I'm catching an optional this time. So that conflict may or may not be in there. And it's up to me now to check it. So if I actually pass this now to this method, the same method as before, it's going to give me a completion error. I cannot pass a conflict just like that because it's an optional conflict, right? Something in there is missing. And that missing thing is me figuring out if it has a value or it's empty, right? Like the traditional null check. So this is a good thing because now I'm not propagating null to my client. So in theory, now it's going to be much more simple to you know keep a client code base that's much more resistant to failures. All right, so let's take a look now on how to create optionals. Okay, and then we'll kind of backtrack and go back to that method and see how it returned that optional. So there's three ways to create optionals. They're all through static factory methods. One of them is by using the of factory method. So of says, pass me a reference and I'll build you an optional of type T. In this case, I want a conflict. Now, you notice that I actually put a null conflict in there. And null is actually not a good thing to pass to of because as soon as of receives a null, it'll actually throw a null pointer exception. Okay, now this is just for the demo sake, right? I, I, I put this in a try catch block. If I run this, you'll see the message that I caught a null pointer exception, right? Which is just this one over here. So it always is going to throw a null pointer exception. So if you ever use of, you have to be 100% sure that you are passing in something that's not null because internally it's doing an objects dot requires not null check. All right, so that's one way to do it. And it's, it's usually the preferred way of doing it because it's not a very verbose method, it's just two letters. The second way is safer, but is more verbose because it's of nullable. Now, if I pass in that null conflict, instead of throwing a null pointer exception, you notice I don't have it in try catch, it's still gonna return me an optional of a conflict, but in this case, it's gonna to return to me an empty optional, okay? So it's up to the caller now to check if that value is gonna be there or not. So it's more forgiving, more verbose, but safer, in, you know, in terms of not getting an exception right away. And the third way is to create an empty optional right away. OK, so again, this is exactly what of nullable is doing. If it sees that it's null, it's going to return an empty optional. And never do this optional of null directly. That defeats the entire purpose of optional. Very bad um, thing to do. OK. So in this case here, I already ran that one. So we already know the output. And let's go on to the next one. And now we're going to see how we can get values out of an optional. However, there is a problem that we have to be aware of. OK, this is a bad way of doing it. We probe for a conflict returning an optional. Right. So now we are forced to check. Can't just use it blindly. We are forced to check what's in there. Now I put a try catch just for demo pur purposes. You'll notice that I do a get the get is going to get the value out of the optional. And what's the value in there that's being wrapped? It's conflict. So I have conflict in here. Now I say get conflict ID. Why is this bad? Because what if the conflict is empty? What if it's null, right? This would be the same thing as saying null dot get conflict ID, which would throw a traditionally a null pointer exception. But because we're dealing with optional, it's going to throw you know, a derivative of that, which is no such element exception. So if I actually run this file, you'll notice it didn't throw it. And that's because it's a random conflict that comes back. So in this case, it worked out for me. But if I keep if I keep executing this, eventually I'll get that exception that gets caught and I can see that a null um, 
no such element exception got caught. So we're not that much better off in this case. Actually, there's more overhead and we get to the same point. So how do we solve this problem? Okay, we solve this problem by guarding it. Okay, so if we go back up to our main method over here, you can see I have one here, the simple way, an imperative way to actually retrieve the values and here it is, right? So this is the classic way of doing it, right? We're probing the conflict, possibly returning all that original method that has the problem. And here I'm doing a good job, right? If conflict not equal null and if it's equal to null, do this and do that. So everything is fine here because I did a good job. But in this case here, I'm returning an optional conflict. So how do we do the same thing? Well, we have to guard it with the is present method that'll return a boolean and then you can do the same thing as you did on top here right you can copy paste this whole line except this is an optional so optional conflict dot get so here's the get but the point is is that it's guarded this time so you know you're not going to get a no such element exception now okay so it's a little verbose there's a little overhead and you might say well what's the whole point right the whole point is here i have to check i have to check what's in there Okay. Yes, I can do a bad job and go and, and say get right away. Okay. But I'm going to show you later on how if you use a functional style of programming with this, that this will actually be done for you and you won't forget to actually guard before doing a get. In fact, the, the, the guard and the get will be done for you if you do a functional style. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So let's take a look here. If I actually run this example, you can see here that the first one, conflict detected and the second one we're missing right so depending on whatever got returned here and here so okay so we're getting on to you know using now we know how to create we know how to retrieve well right we know how to guard now let's take a look at our last example and how to do all that but with a functional style of programming so over here you'll see I'm still using the same method probe for conflict returning an optional so here's that optional of that conflict but now I'm executing the map method off the optional. You may recognize the map method off streams, right? It's the same in principle, except this map is off of an optional. So what's going to happen is that now the map is going to take a look at if there is a value in that optional. So if the value exists, then it's going to get that value. Notice what I'm saying. If get it does the if and the get for you and how it does the get is by executing this uh, functional interface which is called function and i'm executing it through a lambda expression a method reference so i'm getting the conflict id if the value is present notice there's no uh, is present and there is no get there everything is in the map now what map is going to do is going to return to you an optional of that value. In this case, get conflict ID returns an integer, right? So it's going to return to an optional of integer. And then we're going to stream that or chain that with a new method that was introduced in Java 9 called if present or else, right? That seems to be more of like an if this, if this is true, do this, else do this. And that's exactly what it is. So the first, if it's true that the value is in that optional, that map returns, I just want to print it out. And else, I'm going to run this else statement here, which is actually a runnable. Okay, so this is a condensed way of executing an if else off of the return of map. Okay, so there you have it. There is one way to make sure that whenever you get a returned optional, you can actually check if the value is there and execute a piece of code with the map and then do something about it through the if present. There's actually a method called just if present, if you don't really care about the or else, okay? Or you can do it with the if present or else new to Java 9. So my recommendation for you is this. When to use optional? When you have a method, a client-facing method, that has the possibility of returning null, then that is a perfect use case for optional. Case in point, probe for airspace returns a conflict. What if there is no conflict, right? Well, if there is no conflict, we might choose to return an empty optional. Or if there is a conflict, we'll choose to return the conflict itself inside wrapped inside the optional. So now we're forcing the caller to figure out 
if the optional is there or not because obviously there are dire consequences right there are lives at stake if you actually pass in a conflict blindly or don't pass in a conflict okay so very very important in this case to pass in an optional of conflict but that is the recommendation and again if you want to find out where not to use them right go take a look at my blog post and they'll they'll show you examples of um, basically not to use them as instance variables or into constructors or method arguments and stuff like that because it just gets out of control okay we're not there to replace null we're there to use optional in the right place to reduce the occurrences of null in our client code base so there you have it guys there's part one come back for part two i'll cover all these other nice um, functional style methods in optional hope you enjoyed that if you did give me a thumbs up and hope to see you next time ciao guys